good morning, everyone, and welcome to We Meet at EMC Digital Days, and sorry for the short delay. My name is Marie-Therese Kohl, and I will moderate this presentation. We are very pleased that you took the time to participate in our virtual conference. The topic of this presentation is UK Conformity Assessed Mark EMC in UK after Brexit. Our speaker is Glenn Wallace. He will hold the presentation and will answer your questions. But before we start, I would like to point out one thing. You will be muted during the presentation. This means that you cannot ask questions via microphone during the presentation. Nevertheless, you have the opportunity to ask questions during the presentation at any time via the chat function. And you can find the chat function in the webinar control panel. The presentation will be about 60 minutes long. The chat questions will be answered in a Q&A session. And for this, there are five to 10 minutes in addition, in addition scheduled for this. If we are unable to answer all of your questions within this time, we will answer them via email afterwards. And if you still have any other questions left, just mail us at exhibition at we-online.com and we will try to answer all of your questions promptly. At the end of the webinar, you will be asked to participate in a feedback survey. You would be pleased if you take the time to fill out the survey and help us to improve the event. You will also receive the link to this presentation in the next few days, and also the recording will be available at our website shortly. But now I will hand over to our speaker, Glenn, and I wish you an exciting presentation. Hello, right. Today, we're going to be talking about the UKCA mark. So next slide, please. Now, unfortunately, I have to put in a little bit of a uh, disclaimer uh, on this, um, because the UK government um, are still able to change uh, the legislation with regard to how the UKCA mark is implemented. So the information in this presentation is up to date as of the 24th 24th of August 2021, which is when the gov UK government made the last change. So next slide, please. So what we're going to do is just cover the topic of Brexit and why it has actually led to the UKCA mark. Uh, we'll then talk about harmonised standards, which hopefully most of us are aware of with regard to CE marking, but also something now called designated standards, and this applies to the UKCA mark. Something that people may not have heard about is the UK NI mark and um, a little bit on guidance and opportunities. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide, so Brexit. So most of us are aware of what happened with Brexit. Uh, we had a referendum uh, back in 2016, which was a very close run call uh, with about 52% uh, of the uh, voting public opting to uh, Brexit and leave Europe with 48% wanting to actually uh, stay within Europe. So next slide please. So as I said in 2016 we had the referendum. So in, in uh, 2017 Article 50 was published which is basically our exit strategy uh, for leaving the European Union. Uh, and within that, the UK government did had to consider basically trade. Um, and the EU is one of our largest trading partners. So this then uh, started off the negotiations in 2018 and 2019. 2020, we managed to strike a deal with Europe um, before the actual deadline. And therefore, Brexit was completed by the 31st of December 2020. We didn't actually leave Europe until I think it was around about 19th of January 2021. So next slide, please. So UKCA mark and CE marking. Now the fact of Brexit. If prior to Brexit, the UK was within the European Economic Area, so the EEA. So we were part of the European Union, and therefore. C marking was applicable for any products that we placed here in, in the United Kingdom or wish to uh, import or export, I should say, export into Europe. So we had to go through the C marking process. So C marking is purely there to, as, a, as, in effect, the passport for your product. 
what you're doing is showing that it, in fact your product meets the essential requirements for all the applicable directives so if it's an electronic device that could be for example the emc directive uh, it may if you've got a radio aspect to it that could also in include the radio equipment directive you've got the rush directive um, low voltage directive, etc. So as long as if your product met those essential requirements, you could affix the C mark, and that would allow it free movement around the European Economic Area. So next slide, please. So what we're looking at here is pre and post Brexit for Great Britain exporting to the EU, and then on the next slide we'll look at EU importing or exporting into Great Britain. So pre-Brexit, as I say, the UK, so that's England, Scotland, Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland and Wales, was within the European economic area. So as a manufacturer in Great Britain or the UK, we could actually uh, uh, go through and meet the essential requirements of the products and place that product onto the market. So, so in effect, the manufacturer took direct responsibility of placing that product onto the market to the end customer. There's always the opportunity to use something called an authorised representative um, or a distributor before uh, uh, the actual product gets to the end customer. Now, this is mainly to do with actually the uh, declaration of conformity, who is taking legal responsibility of that product when placing it into the market. So post Brexit, uh, I suspect this is a PDF and not uh, a PowerPoint. So post Brexit, um, the UK, well, when we say UK, and this is where it gets interesting, it's all Great Britain. Um, so Scotland, uh, England and Wales, um, are therefore outside now the European Union. And this now adds a level of complexity in that uh, C marking is owned by the European Union or the European Commission. And as a now manufacturer outside of the European Union, you now need to use an importer or authorised representative to now place that product onto the market. So in effect, they would take over the legal responsibility and this has been one of the biggest changes with regard to Brexit is the legal responsibility of the actual manufacturer, the authorised representative and the importer. Um, so to that effect, um, the so manufacturers in Great Britain, um, you have to use the importer or authorised representative who have to be based within the European Union so they um, sign off the declaration of conformity and therefore take legal responsibility. So next slide please. So if you're based in the European Union and you now want to export here to Great Britain, okay. So pre-Brexit, as the UK was part of Europe, so again, <laughs> uh, France, Germany, Italy, etc., are in Europe. Um, it was possible for uh, the manufacturer to place that product onto the market and sign off the declaration conformity by taking the legal responsibility. However, with post-Brexit, the European Union is now outside of Great Britain and um, therefore to now import a product into Great Britain, you now need to use the importer unauthorised representative route. And this is, I say once again, because of the legal standing. Now, one of the bigger changes, and we'll discuss it shortly, is that um, with Great Britain or the UK now outside of Europe, uh, we have to apply UK law, whereas prior to that, it was all covered under European law. So this is where the, the big changes have taken place. So next slide, please. So as I say, the legal implications. With Brexit, um, the UK no longer has to follow European law. We have, um, as part of the Brexit transition um, process, we adopted all the all of the um, European directives into UK law, and UK law is what we refer to as statutory instruments or SIs. So, um, whereas before, if for example, when you're applying the CE mark, 
Um, the CE mark is covered under European law, so so um, the various um, authorities and, and regulatory bodies or policing bodies uh, would apply European law in policing those matters. Um, as I say, because the UK is now outside, we have to follow UK law. What this now means with regard to CE marking here in the UK is a little bit complex at the moment because we're actually still able to accept the C mark at this time. Now with Brexit we had a transition period which was 2021 and as we'll see a bit further on the UK government as of the 24th of August 2021 actually extended this period. So they moved the stop date from the end of 2021 now to 2022. However, many uh, manufacturers, importers and representatives are already applying the UKCA mark. Now, why uh, did the, uh, the UK have to bring in their own approval, or not an approval mark, but an acceptance mark? Um, that is because the C mark itself is actually owned by the European Union or the European Commission. It is a trademark. So therefore, as the UK is now out of Europe, we are not permitted to use that. It is a scheme operated by the European Commission. This is why the UK government has developed or uh, run in parallel the UKCA mark. So in essence, what you're doing for C marking is exactly the same as what you're going to do for a UKCA mark with one or two minor uh, alterations. And that I explain as we go through this presentation. So next slide, please. Next slide. So now let's talk about the actual UKCA mark itself. So UKCA it stands for UK Conformity Assessed. So as I say, this is very similar in its um, principles as to CE marking. So CE marking, there are normally, let's say, two routes. You, uh, if your product uh, meets the requirements for uh, self-assessment, and you can then self-declare your declaration conformity, that is still applicable to the UKCA mark as well. If you're using a notified body um, to place your product onto the market, now you're more than likely using a notified body, um, for example, where um, to give you the presumption of conformity, it may be that the actual standards listed in the official journal do not give you a full presumption of conformity or, or, the, or a standard uh, for your product doesn't, does not exist harmonized standard so therefore you may use a notified body uh, to pass an assessment and therefore use that as part of your declaration conformity now a big change with regard to the notified bodies was that here in the uk all the notified bodies uh, ceased to be recognized by the european union um, at the end of last year um, so any uh, uk notified bodies who had uh, expressed an opinion or issued out the declaration conformity, um, that did not carry across and therefore uh, uh, customers or manufacturers in the UK would, ha would have to seek and still have to seek um, a notified body based in Europe to carry on with that certification. The UKCA mark, um, as I say, is running in parallel to the CE mark. Um, at the moment, it is very much in parallel. However, it is possible over time, and this is, I guess, what most people's biggest fears are, is, that, is uh, if there's any uh, deviance or uh, divergence um, between what the UKCA mark and the CE mark requires. Most of the, uh, the worry is really with regard to the actual standards and the assessment process of the products. At the moment, uh, say so we're fairly well aligned on standards, but the way that the standards can be, can be implemented between uh, a harmonized standard in the official journal for Europe and the, um, what we call the designated stand uh, for the UK, um, their processes are different and it, therefore it may mean that one particular list may be updated quicker than another and therefore you may start to have technical complexities with the products in that you may have to test it twice or reevaluate it later on. At the moment, the biggest change is going to be paperwork. That's the good news. Um, so what, what are these big changes really? So 
the main change is going to be your declaration conformity. If you're based in Europe and you want to provide that product into the UK and apply the UK CA mark, then you need to have an authorised representative or an importer. They are the ones who are going to have their name on the declaration conformity because they will be based here in the UK, well, let's say in Great Britain to be specific, so either in Scotland, England or Wales. So because they are taking over the legal responsibility, so they would have to have their name on declaration conformity. Um, so what you're now looking at is um, for a product to be sold into the UK um, using the UK CA mark as well as C marking, you'll now have two declarations conformity. Okay. Uh, on this slide, uh, there's also a very useful link to our uh, uh, gov.uk website, which actually gives you uh, a wealth of information um, about the actual UKCA process, any of the um, real finer details, and this is kept up to date by the UK government. Next slide, please. So, as I mentioned before, you'll actually need two declarations of conformity. So you'll need a declaration conformity for your C marking for Europe and to apply the UK CA mark for the UK, uh, you will need a separate DOC. Now on the UK website, they've actually gone through and made your life a lot easier in that there is a list which transposes the EU directives into UK law. So what we can see here is just four examples. So uh, the first one we're looking at is the European Directive for the Roche, so uh, 2011-65EU, so the 65th Directive published in 2011. Now that was transposed into UK law in 2012, and our statutory number for that is 2012 number 3032. So if we're now talking about EMC, so the Electromagnetic Compatibility Directive, so 2014-30-EU, that was implemented in 2016 into UK law. And so the statutory number for that is 2016, number 1091. So on your declaration conformity for the UKCA mark, you would not make reference to the European directives. You now have to make reference to UK law, so these statutory numbers. Uh, so once again, the link on here goes directly to the UK Gov website, where it actually lists, I think it's about a total of 16 directives, um, EU directives to the UK. Uh, regulation, so it makes your life a lot easier in transposing those across. So next slide, please. So the UK CA mark, so it stands for the United Kingdom. However, and this is where it gets a little bit interesting, it's only applicable to Great Britain. Now, as part of the Brexit negotiations, uh, initially we were looking at the UK, so England, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales. However, we came across a little bit of an impasse with regard to the land border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So as agreed, uh, in effect, a sea border went in place between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. So although it's called the UKCA mark, it's actually more a GBCA mark. However, uh, the UK government haven't changed it. So the UKCA mark is only applicable if you're applying a product into Scotland, England, and Wales. When it comes to Northern Ireland, they actually have the UK NI mark. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on. So the UK CA mark is only applicable to Great Britain. So next slide, please. So when do you actually need to apply the UK CA? So this is where I say things are a little bit fluid at the moment. So the UK CA mark actually became applicable as of the 19th of January 2021, which is when it, when we actually left Europe. It was possible for you to start to place the UK CA mark onto products. Now the UK government gave a, what was called a standstill period or a transition period. Now this was initially up to the 31st of December 2021. So you're looking uh, with an impl uh, a mandatory implementation date of the 1st of January 2022. However, with what's been going on in, in the, the global uh, arena with regard to COVID and economies, 
the UK government pushed the standstill period back by one year. So we've got one year's additional transition period. So the actual sea marking is still valid here in the UK. So England, Scotland, Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland and Wales um, up until um, the 31st of December 2022. So we the UKCA mark is mandatory as of the 1st of January 2023. So what about if you've already got a product already placed on the market? Um, so once again, this is where um, you're in this transition period. You can now go through the documentation, um, look at the declaration conformity, transpose those EU directives into the uh, European SI numbers. Um, as I say, because you're now importing into Great Britain, which is outside of Europe, then you will need to have um, an authorised representative or an importer. They would have their name on the declaration conformity. Um, and this is how you can now start to apply the UKCA mark. Next slide, please. So I've spoken about harmonised standards and designated standards. I made reference to it. So. Hopefully most of you are aware of what a harmonized standard is. So when standards are actually um, designed and published, um, they, they may be referred to as a harmonized standard, actually in their title. But when we talk about harmonized standards with regard to the um, actual CE marking, it's made reference to what we call the official journal of the European Union. So, how does a standard become a harmonized standard and listed on the official journal? So basically the European Commission sets out a framework or a goal that a particular standard must achieve with regard to essential requirements to meet the directive. It is then reviewed by a body of consultants. They say whether it meets those essential requirements and if so, then gets published onto the official journal. Now, the official journal is a way of giving you a presumption of conformity with regard to your um, declaration. So within, within those standards, there are various test methods, uh, et cetera, that enable you to show that your product meets those essential requirements, be it um, from a safety side with regard to low voltage directive, performance when it comes to say radio equipment, and when it comes to say the EMC directive, showing that the product will continue to operate in its intended environment by reducing the amount of spurious emissions and giving it a level of immunity to, uh, to its environment. So next slide, please. As I mentioned before, the harmonized standards are covered by the European, uh, to support the European directives. Now the directive itself is um, is mandatory to, to be met and within that uh, say it has these essential requirements now from an emc perspective in in essence basically the emc directive says that the product shall not be interfered with and shall not interfere with other products so um, so by that it's actually trying to protect the actual rf spectrum now electromagnetic uh, sorry electromagnetic compatibility between um the C marking and the UKCA mark at this time has not changed. So if you're doing EMC testing in your in your lab, um, those results you can still transpose across at this time and apply to the UKCA mark and so say it's only the declaration conformity that will be different. Um, as I mentioned, low voltage directive, radio equipment directive, ROSH, REACH, these are all really the applicable European directives to, the, um, uh, to enable you to apply the CE mark. So next slide, please. So what about the UK, or in this case, Great Britain? As I said before, these harmonized standards are the actual official journal. Now the official journal is owned by the European Commission. As Great Britain or the UK have left Europe, we do not have access to that information. We do not have a legal right to use it. Um, also, we have no control over it. So this is where the UK government have taken on board the similar principles, but have now made this into what we call designated standards. 
So in the UK, we now have a separate list. We can't call it an official journal. That's owned by the European Commission, but we now have a list owned by the UK government, which are called designated standards. And we have designated standards based, there, based on each statutory instrument, i.e. each equivalent European directive. So there will be a designated standards list for radio equipment, um, one for EMC, one for low voltage, et cetera, et cetera. So next slide, please. So harmonized standards, just to reiterate this. Now within harmonized standards, they're SEN, SENELEC, ETSI. So SEN and SENELEC, very common on the EMC side of things. ETSI, so the European Telecommunication Standards Institute, this is what you'll be using for things like radio equipment devices. So if your product has a radio equipment device in there, an, R, uh, uh, an RF module, then you'll more than likely be using the ETSI standards with regard to compliance within ETSI itself, it also has EMC requirements, its own EMC standards. Um, as I've mentioned before, if they are accepted by the Commission's consultants that meet the brief or the essential requirements of the directive, they will be published onto this official journal. And once again, there's a link there that will take you through to the uh, official journal uh, or uh, to the various official journals and the harmonized standards. So next slide, please. So as I mentioned, designated standards. So this is what the UK government have put in place. Now, what is actually happening is that for it to be a designated standard, we have a slightly different process in that um, basically our uh, national standards body, so British Standards Institute, have taken over the responsibility of putting these standards onto the um, onto the designated standards. So at the moment, um, on, on the designated standards list are still your ENs, your IECs, but for it to be a, um, for, to be used for the uh, UKCA mark, it will have to be adopted by BSI, and therefore it will become a BSEN, or a BSENIEC, or BSISO, um, and therefore it's, it's therefore a national standard um, associated to the UK and in effect controlled by British Standards uh, Institute. So this is how we now have our designated standards. So next slide please. So this is a slide that might be of quite use to you. Um, if you actually do actually download the presentation, these links are actually active. So on here, we've actually linked through to the actual designated standards um, uh, part of the uh, Gov website. We can download the most up-to-date list for things like radio equipment, for the EMC. Um, so within here, you'll, you can now download the actual list of designated standards. In there, you'll have the typical, say, uh, CISPA, uh, CISPA 32, so um, the equivalent, so BSEN, um, 55032 for your uh, radiated and conducted emissions, basically emissions measurements for your multimedia equipment. Um, it'll then, in here, it will also list the um, uh, starter presumption date um, when this standard has now been implemented that you now need to make reference to on your declaration conformity. On the, and there's then, uh, which is normally in uh, Annex 1. And then in Annex 2 of the designated standard are those where the, um, there has been a withdrawal of the presumption of conformity. So once again, if it's been withdrawn, you no longer have that presumption. It does not give you that legal, uh, legal standing. So you can still use it if you wanted to, but you now have to justify that within all your technical documentation. Um, but as I say, at the moment, our designated standards are running in parallel with the harmonized standards in the official journal. So at the moment, testing for either C marking or UKCA mark is the same at this time. However, over time, it may diverge. And this is on the one downside of Brexit. OK, so next slide, please. OK, so I've talked about the UKCA mark and its applicability just to um, the Great Britain. Because we have this sea border 
between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, um, we had to now implement something slightly different. So we actually have, and it's not, not, not much spoken about, is the UK NI mark. So Northern Ireland is a little bit of an unusual one because of this sea border. So because it's the Northern Ireland is still aligned in, in respect to the Republic of Ireland, um, it's still able to actually accept the CE mark uh, when products are actually placed onto the market. So um, that's possible. So you know, there's um, there's no need to have an importer or an authorised representative if the product is going from Republic of Ireland into Northern Ireland. If you're putting a product into the market and you're based in Northern Ireland, then this is where you'd use the UK NI mark. However, it has to be applied in addition to the CE mark because once again we have this sea border and Northern Ireland is still semi-treated as being part of Europe. So this is where it gets a little bit more complex. Um, so nobody in, in Great Britain is allowed to apply the UK NI mark. It can only be done from Northern Ireland. Um, so this is where there are um, uh, one or two um, unclear uh, issues on that front. Um, but the idea here is that it still allows um, companies or, or uh, manufacturers in Northern Ireland, the unfettered access that was agreed in principles uh, through the Brexit negotiations to allow products still to move into the Great Britain market. So this is why we have the UK NI mark. So next slide, please. So next slide. So are there any additional costs? So from a self-certification perspective, at this time, the costs, any additional costs are minimal. Most of what I've spoken about, for, for example, when it comes to EMC, you're not having to retest because the, the harmonized standard and our designated standards are the same. So you don't have to retest at this time. Where the additional costs come in is going to be in, in time uh, in producing additional paperwork. So. And say so for that, it'll be your declaration of conformity, where you'll now need to have a representative, so an importer or authorised representative based in Great Britain, who's going to take that legal responsibility against the UK law. Um, and once again, listing not the EU uh, directives, but the UK um, regulations. That's what we have to do. Where there may be additional costs, as I've mentioned right at the start, is if you've used a conformity assessment or a notified body. Now, this may be applicable, once again, if you're using something like an RF device embedded into your product. It may not over affect your overall EMC. However, it may be um, so that the notified body status um, within Great Britain, um, we cannot recognize any notified bodies from Europe, and likewise, Europe does not recognize any of our old, what we call notified bodies here from the UK, so we now have them as conformity assessment. This is why we've seen, certainly over the last couple of years, quite a few of the uh, European or international, so American, um, EMC and conformity bodies buying up uh, our EMC labs and conformity assessment bodies here in the UK to give them still that market access. So if, for example, you're using you know, some of our strategic partners that we have as EMC Labs, so things like Element, uh, Eurofins, UL, they will still have access to the UK market because they have labs here in Great Britain. Other than that, this is where you could be looking at additional costs if you're having to have to use these conformity assessment or notified bodies. Okay, so next slide, please. So getting towards more of the summary. So here what we can see is just an overview as a very quick guide of which applicable mark uh, needs to be applied. So if you're uh, shipping from Europe to Europe, obviously the CE mark. From Europe to Great Britain, the UK CA mark. From Europe to Northern Ireland, because I say Northern Ireland has a sea border, it can still accept the CE mark, or if it's been placed, i.e. designed, manufactured, actually placed onto the market as its entry point into the market in Northern Ireland, 
then it has to use the C mark plus the UK NI mark. Um, likewise, if we're shipping from Great Britain to the EU, um, okay, it's the C mark. However, to apply the C mark, once again, as a manufacturer, we'd still need to have an authorized representative or an importer that's going to take on the legal responsibility. They are taken on, on that, so therefore, on the declaration conformity, they would have to have their names as, a, as, re, as the uh, registered address to enable the C mark. So once again, we've got a couple of links just to re reiterate this should you need it. So next slide, please. Right, so thank you very much for attending. Hopefully there has been some uh, valuable information into this topic. Uh, as I say, it is quite complex and I have gone over this fairly quickly. Um, but say so if you lost to download the presentation, there are active links that will take you to the uh, UK Gov website to help support you and keep you up to date with any changes in this information. Now, are there any questions? Yes, thanks, Glenn, for your interesting presentation. As you already mentioned, we would like now to turn our attention to your questions, so feel free to enter them and Glenn will answer it. There's one first question. Um, Glenn, can I have just one declaration of conformity for both CE and UK CEA marking? So, interesting question. Um, from experience and having spoken quite extensively over the last 12 months to you know, our, our partners who are the EMC labs and uh, also having attended a couple of the um, UK government uh, webinars on this topic, the recommendation is no. Um, now the reason behind that is that the CE mark declaration conformity is based uh, for European law as I say, and the actual uh, address on that would have to be different to the deck fresh conformity for the UKCA mark. As I say, because uh, for UKCA, we're outside of Europe, the, re the actual registered address for the authorised representative or the importer, if you're uh, uh, exporting from Europe into Great Britain, would have to be a separate address. And therefore, and also because you're referencing different law, you're not referencing a directive, you're referencing the um, statutory instrument, the UK law, therefore you would have to have two separate declaration conformities. Hopefully that answers that question. Thanks, Glenn. Um, another question, if I have used a notified body here in Europe, it is still valid in the UK? Okay, so I think as I mentioned before, this is where it gets a little bit complex. So prior to Brexit, um, our notified body status um, um, was recognised within Europe. However, having Brexited, we lose those notified body statuses. So we're therefore removed of, of, of something what we call the Nando list. And the Nando list has all, all the actual registered notified bodies. So. Um, we're not able to actually use the name notified body here in Great Britain or in the UK anymore, which is why they're now conformity assessment bodies. And um, notified bodies like a registered name, etc., for, for, for the European Union. Um, so, as I mentioned before, um, because we're now out, outside of Europe, if you've used a notified body um, to put your uh, to help assist in applying the C mark. For say EMC, if you've had to use them because it's a fixed, um, fixed installation or it's not possible to test to the um, harmonised standards, uh, and you've used a notified body in that sense, um, their their results of their opinion does not stand when it's uh, transposed into the UK. So uh, the answer to that is no. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yeah. What is the deadline for a new medical device to have UKCA? So uh, the medical device um, from memory, I think, is going to be around about June 2023. I think it, it was in one of my slides. I might have just skipped over it. 
yeah, so medical devices have been have been given a uh, a longer a transition period um, to enable you uh, to continue to use the CE mark before having to apply the UKCA mark. Um, but the most up-to-date information would be on the government website, but say from memory, I think it's around about June 2023. Perfect, thanks. Another question. Can we place on the same label on product CI and UKCA mark? Yes. So once again, as part of this transition period, um, once again, the UK government is aware that just applying a simple additional mark will cost money. And so by that at the moment, so yet to answer the question, yes, you can put the UKCA mark and the C mark on the same label on the product. It may be though that um, your current label does not have significant room to enable the additional UKCA mark. So you can apply a, U a separate UKCA mark onto the product if there is room on the product. If not, you can then apply the UKCA mark at this time within the actual documentation. Um, there is once again a specific date, and unfortunately I, I, I can't remember it off the top of my head, when the actual UKCA mark has to be affixed to the actual product. But once again, we're in this transition, so we have this either or. It could be on the product or it has to be in the documentation. Thanks a lot, Clan, for answering the question. I would say um, we will reply through the other questions via email. Um, okay. <laughs> thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you enjoy the presentation from Glenn. Um, the next presentation topic is system efficient ESD design for robust electronic systems. And this session will start at 2 p.m. So see you there, hopefully, and still enjoy our EMC digital days. Goodbye.